Hi, everyone. Uh, today, we're going to do a little more uh, approximation. Uh, you recall we uh, looked at approximating uh, nonlinear functions with linear functions. And in fact, you go back a little further, you recall that uh, that quote from Simon and Bloom that I uh, really like about how uh, linear functions, um, that they're an important reason for knowing about linear functions is that we use them to approximate nonlinear functions. So let's actually review just a little bit what we've done and then we'll use that as the foundation for kind of going to the next level here. So if you recall that what we said we want to do was we want to approximate uh, we want to approximate a function f, and what we want to do uh, today is we want to approximate a function f from rn into r. Now, we already uh, worked on approximating a function, a real function, from r into r, and so today we're kind of going to the next step to approximate functions defined on rn, and we want to do that near some point x bar in Rn. Now, what we're going to do first is we're going to review what we did in R1. So we're going to take this n off of here, and we're going to go back and look at approximating a function uh, from R to R. So uh, and we want to do this with a think of it as a simple function. And that simple function is going to be the Taylor polynomial. And to start with, let's make this a, uh, a linear function or an affine function. So let's say linear or affine function is what we mean by a simple function. And in fact, uh, a linear function, affine function, we can also identify that as a first degree polynomial. And so I'm actually going to write this now as not linear or affine, which of course it's going to be, uh, not just simple, but we're going to say this is a first degree polynomial. So first degree polynomial function, that's the Taylor uh, polynomial. And so this is p of x. And we said that we want to uh, do this with a linear function, so or an affine function. So this is going to be a naught plus a1 times delta x, where delta x, of course, is x minus x bar. So we're doing this near an x bar. And in fact, let's even uh, draw kind of a quick picture here of what's going on. We've got a function, let's say, that looks like this. And let's say these are the, uh, the axes here. Here's x. Here's y, and we want to approximate the function, let's say, near x bar. And in fact, if this is the squaring function, this would be x bar equals 1. And this would be, well, I don't have it starting at 1, so this might be 2. So this might be x squared plus 1. So let's just say this is x squared plus 1. And so we're approximating this nonlinear function, uh, the squaring function, with a linear function, and uh, we could write this as we have done. This is delta x. This is delta y. So it's actually a linear function when I express delta y as a function of delta x, because that's just a1 times delta x. But of course, this is uh, not, a, not a linear function in x and y, because it doesn't go through 
doesn't go through the origin, it's not homogeneous. So A naught in this picture here would be uh, would be um, uh, f of x bar, which would be uh, two, right there. So, so this is p of x, and we want to know what a naught and a one are. Well, we did that before, but let's uh, let's review. So we have uh, let's look at first the derivative of the p function, the Taylor polynomial that's doing the approximating, and that derivative is going to be just a1, right? a0 drops out, a1 times x, a1 times minus x bar, that's a constant. So this is just a1, and of course, that derivative, unlike the, the whole polynomial, which depends on x, the derivative does not depend on x. That's the same whatever x is, right? So. Uh, Let's go down a little further here and say we, in terms of our approximating, what we want to do is we want it to be the case that at x bar, f of x bar equals p of x bar. If p is going to be a good approximation near x bar, we want it to be a perfect approximation, if you like. At, right at x bar, and of course, p at x bar is what? Well, if x equals x bar, in fact, let's even note here that we're looking at x equals x bar, so we're looking at delta x equals zero. So if delta x is zero, p of x is a naught. If x equals x bar, p of x is a naught. So this is just a naught. So that tells me that I want the constant term here, uh, a naught, to be f of x bar, and uh, if I want the, the derivative of my function that I'm approximating, if I want my approximation to have the same derivative at x bar, it's not going to have the same derivative everywhere, just look over here. The derivative here is the same everywhere, it's a1, but the derivative for f, let's actually say this is f of x here, that of course depends on x. But we want the derivative to be the same, the slope to be the same at x bar, and so the derivative of p at x bar is a1, because it's a1 everywhere. So this is a1, so that tells me that I want a1 to be f prime of x bar. So that means that our polynomial then, we've kind of got it all figured out. We know what a0 is, we know what a1 is, both the coefficients. So we go down here, we have, therefore, we have p of x equals f of x bar plus f prime at x bar delta x, or x minus x bar. Okay, so maybe we should write that in here too. This is x minus x bar. Um, so now uh, let's look at the best second degree polynomial for uh, approximating our function. And so let's just change this to, in fact, let me erase this and just put in here second degree polynomial, and I'll do that in a different color. Okay, so if it's a second degree polynomial, then it's going to be uh, a quadratic function, another way of saying the same thing. So it has a, f a zero degree term, a constant term, it has a first degree or linear term, and it has a second degree or quadratic term. And so here we could say that's a2 times x minus x bar squared. And so uh, the first polynomial that we wrote was the Taylor the first degree Taylor polynomial. And so um, I could have, and maybe I should have written a 
P1 here for the first degree polynomial. But now, of course, I'm looking at the second degree Taylor polynomial. So I want to put in here uh, a two, second degree Taylor polynomial. And so the derivative now of this second degree Taylor polynomial is still a1, but the derivative here is 2a2 times delta x, or 2a2 times x minus x bar. So this is, let me again put this in, in pink, so this is going to be plus 2a2 uh, delta x, let's say. Um, and so now we want to look at the second derivative, which in the first case was, of course, zero everywhere, but now it's not. So the second derivative of our second degree Taylor polynomial is just going to be 2a2. Let's actually note that, again, that this is, I could have written this as 2a2 x minus x bar. So again, you can see that if I take the second derivative, the derivative of the first derivative, I just get 2a2. So this is 2a2. And we want to have uh, not only the value of f at x bar, the same as our approximation, and our approximation to have the same derivative or slope, but now we want our approximation to have the same curvature near x bar and to have exactly the same curvature at x bar. Now, of course, in this case, the function I drew was already quadratic. So the approximation is going to have exactly the same curvature as this quadratic, but a more general function, and I'm going to draw one shortly, uh, the derivative of the function uh, won't necessarily uh, the second derivative, the curvature of the function, won't be the same as the curvature of our approximation away from x bar. But at x bar, we want the curvature to be the same, so we want this to be p double prime at x bar, and p double prime at x bar is uh, 2 a 2 so therefore, I know that a2 is going to have to be one-half um, uh, uh, is going to have to be one-half of p double prime, of f double prime of x bar. So one-half of the second derivative uh, of f at x bar. So that means that our second degree Taylor polynomial, and now I could put the 2 in here and the 2 in here, and for both of these, whether it's a 1 or a 2, it doesn't make any difference. They didn't change, but here, I'm going to put in 2, and so this is plus 1 half f double prime, second derivative of f at x bar, times, um, times delta x squared. That is actually the critical. <laughs> that turns out to be the really critical difference here. Okay, so let's uh, do one more thing here. Let's see what the implication of all of this is. So every, what we've done here, we've this is a review of what we've already done. I just did it a little more concisely and a little a little differently, but the same ideas. So. Uh, but what we're going to do now is we're going to do something a little bit different. Uh, let's see what the implication of this is for optimization, for maximization and minimization. So let's take this off. I think we can do that pretty quickly. And let's, uh, let's see what we get for maximization and minimization here. So let's say if x bar maximizes or 
minimizes f, then we know that the derivative of f at x bar has to be 0. So let's put this over here. Then f prime at x bar equals 0. So that means then that we have That means that uh, in fact, let me come back over here. There's something I wanted to uh, write over here, but I didn't. I'm going to use it over here. So let's because what we did here in pink was when we went from the linear <coughs> first degree uh, approximation, approximating polynomial, to the second degree quadratic. Uh, approximating polynomial. And so I'm going to stay in pink. I want to write that I'm going to call this, and in fact, let me put it in a different color just so that to offset here so we can see that. So I'm going to call this, and of course this because they're the same thing. I'm going to refer to those, and actually it would be the same down here because that's the same term. I've just substituted for a2. I've substituted 1 half f double prime of x. This I'm going to refer to as the quadratic term in the Taylor polynomial, uh, the second degree term if you like, and I'm going to write it as a function on its own. So I'm going to write this quadratic term as q of delta x. Um, and so uh, in this case, q of delta x is just uh, a, a2 times delta x squared. So what we have over here, if uh, x bar maximizes f, f, and let's draw a little picture down here of what things have to look like. So um, we have a function that maybe looks uh, Something like this. Let's say this is f. And so, uh, well, actually, I have minimizing here, but let's, uh, well, we can go with minimizing. That's okay. So let's suppose that at x bar, so this is x bar, the function is minimized. And so uh, the derivative at x bar is 0. So we're kind of at the bottom of the, of the curvature, and uh, as we move either way from x bar, if x bar minimizes f, then as we move away from x bar in either direction, it can't be the case that f turns down. It has to either be flat or turn up. And so uh, what that really means then is as I move away from x and look at, let's say, delta y, it's got to be the case that as I move delta x in either direction, positive or negative, the, the value of f has to at least not go down and perhaps go up. So we want to say something about what happens, how f, or delta y, changes as we displace x to the right or to the left here. So let's write that as we, uh, I think we did last time, delta f of delta x. That's delta y. Okay. That is f of x minus f of x bar. So for example, if x is over here, then the change in y is the amount that f increases uh, as we go from x bar over to x, which is exactly this amount here. And since our polynomial is an approximation to f, then, and let me put the equal sign back over here to get a little more room maybe, then uh, this is going to be approximately the value of our polynomial at x minus 
the value of our polynomial at x bar. And let's even say it's the second degree. It would, this would be so for the first degree, second degree, any other degree of uh, polynomial that's doing the approximation, the Taylor polynomial. But we're focusing here on the second degree uh, polynomial. And so let's see what that is. Well, P2 at x is, let's come down here, that's f of x bar plus a linear term and a quadratic term, and p2 at x bar is f of x bar plus a linear term and a quadratic for term. So the, the constant term in this difference here is 0. It's f of x bar minus f of x bar. And now let's look at the uh, first degree or linear term in this difference. That's going to be... Uh, f prime at x, uh, uh, f prime at x bar times uh, delta x, actually. So it's going to be f prime at x bar times delta x. And that is also going to be 0 because f prime at x bar is 0. So this is going to be plus 0 for this first degree term. And so we're left with just the quadratic term. So let's actually write here, this is going to be um, plus 1 half f double prime at x bar times delta x squared, which is the just, so the, the whole difference is just the quadratic term as a function of delta x. So our approximation to how y changes is this quadratic second degree homogeneous uh, uh, function, which we've called the quadratic term or the quadratic function as a function of delta x. And clearly, if x bar minimizes f, then it has to be the case that for every delta x that I put in here, small, so we're near x bar, for every delta x small enough, positive or negative, when I put that in here, it's got to be the case that this increases y, or at least doesn't decrease it. So it has to be the case that f double prime of x bar is greater than or equal to 0. And in fact, let's just look at the case where we have this strictly greater than 0. So that would say that, in fact, let's write this as also as a2 delta x squared. So 1 half f double prime, second derivative, or a2, we've used them as the, uh, the, the same thing. So let's come back here and let's note that if I focus just on, uh, well, I guess I've done that here, just on the, the change. In fact, let's do that here. So let's, let's redraw this picture. This is delta y. Let's say this now is delta x, and this is a2 delta x squared. The actual function you know, that I've drawn here, it might not actually be quadratic, but our quadratic approximation, p2 of x, that is this quadratic function here, and if x bar minimizes f, then the quadratic approximation is just this pure quadratic term or this homogeneous quadratic term. And in the case where x bar maximizes f, I've got something that looks like this. And here's delta x, here's delta y, and this is a2 times delta x squared. So in both cases, 
This is the approximating Taylor polynomial at x bar and near x bar given that x bar maximizes or minimizes the original function. Let's take this picture off here. And let's just note that this is the case where A2 is positive, which is the same thing as saying F double prime at x bar is positive. And this is A2 is negative, which is the same thing as saying F double prime at x bar is negative. Now, of course, A2 is actually 1 half F double prime at x bar. And so this says 1 half, this is positive. But clearly, if 1 half, this is positive, this is positive. Uh, so you can see now the connection between the second derivative being positive or negative, which we're all familiar with from way back when we did calculus um, as an undergraduate, maybe first year calculus even. Now we can see how that fits in with the Taylor polynomial that approximates the function. And this will enable us to go to the case where we have uh, a function not just on R, not just a real function, but on Rn.